after World War II, the ground of aviation experienced great developments in the supersonic era. North American Aviation was one of many companies that have sought to exploit these recent innovations in the development of a new generation of aircraft. In early 1954, the company embarked on a separate study of a long-range, all-weather, carrier-based tri-bomber capable of reaching supersonic speeds while carrying a sizable payload. This led to the creation of the A-5 Vigilante, one of the largest carrier-based aircraft in the United States Navy, which saw extensive service during the Vietnam War. The A-5 Vigilante made its maiden flight on August 31, 1958, entered service in June 1961, and retired in 1979. At the time of its introduction, the Vigilante was one of the largest and by far the most complex aircraft to operate from an aircraft carrier. It was furnished with a high-mounted square wing with a boundary layer control system to improve low-speed lift. Twin intakes were used to aspirate two engines, the pairing providing the necessary power while also increasing survivability over vast ocean spaces and enemy territory. The two-man crew was arranged in a tandem seating with the pilot in the front and the navigator in the rear. The A-5 Vigilante was designed to be a high-performance heavy bomber that could operate from the constrained environments typical of naval aircraft carriers. It has a length of 76 feet 6 inch, a wingspan of 53 feet, a height of 19 feet 5 inch, an empty weight of 32,783 pounds, and maximum takeoff weight is 63,085 pounds. The widespread use of a new aluminum lithium alloy for the wing skins made the Vigilante significantly lighter than aerospace aluminum alone. Other parts of the airframe use expensive but strong and light titanium components. Powering the A5 are two General Electric J79 GE8 afterburning turbojet engines with 10,900 pounds of dry thrust edge and 17,000 pounds with afterburner. The Vigilante can reach a top speed of 1,149 knots at 40,000 feet or Mark II. Range is approximately 974 nautical miles. Service ceiling is 52,100 feet and the rate of climb is 1,000 feet per minute. The Vigilante was one of the first bombers to use electronic fly-by-wire fly controls as well as a computerized head-up tab pilot display and an onboard digital computer to aid the pilot in operating the extensive onboard electronics. To accommodate carrier operations, the wingtips, nose cone, and vertical stabilizer could fall inward, making the large jet bomber somewhat more compact. As the Vigilante was primarily a heavy bomber, it was equipped to deliver the nuclear payload, though in an unusual configuration. The Vigilante's two relatively widely spaced engines allowed the large bomber to carry additional fuel as well as a single B-27, B-28 
or B-43 free for nuclear bomb in a central cylindrical shaped weapons bay between them. The Navy's delivery of nuclear weapons was then emphasized on submarine launch ballistic missiles. The A-5 Stroll later changed from high-speed heavy bomber to high-speed after-action reconnaissance, a role in which excelled during the Vietnam War, where they began their service tenure in August of 1964. Speed and agility were key assets to the aircraft, though the low to medium altitude operation environments made the A-5 susceptible to ground-based threats and interception. Eighteen RA-5Cs fell to enemy action during the war, with a further nine lost to accidents. These heavy losses forced A-5 production lines to reopen, and 36 more aircraft were added to existing stocks from the span of 1968 to 1970. While its wartime service record is considered rather poor, the aircraft was heavily relied upon the war planners in a fighting environment it was never intended for. A total of 167 A5 were produced, of which 137 were built as or converted to RA-5C, a reconnaissance configuration. It had a slightly greater wing area and acted along canoe ship fairing under the fuselage for a multi-sensor reconnaissance pike, which housed an APD-7 side-looking airborne radar, AAS-21 infrared light scanner, and camera pikes, as well as improved electronic countermeasures. An ANALQ-61 electronic intelligence system could also be carried. After the war, the A-5's career quickly ended in November 1979. Its poor combat record and high operating cost did not prolong the design's career. Its reconnaissance mission was quickly taken over by Martin at lower cost options, while its role as a tri aircraft was completely overshadowed. My video about the A5 Vigilante answer. Thank you for watching. If you find this video interesting, please give me your thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe to support the channel. Goodbye and see you again in the next videos. Tạm biệt và hẹn gặp lại quý vị và các bạn trong các video tiếp theo.